All right. Uh, anybody else, anything else you want to share this morning before we get started? Remember, we're going to do a Q&A period at the end of the day. Spence, good to see you. We'll do a Q&A period um, as soon as we get finished. What we've got to go through will take about 20 minutes. Um, but it is important that we pull all of those pieces together into one spot. And I definitely want to be able to do that so that we can move forward uh, and, and, and get things taken care of. Uh, and so I, I just want to make sure that you um, that you're all caught up and ready to go. And if you've had any questions or anything uh, that you're free to ask them today, we've had to kind of blow through the, the uh, content pretty quickly the last few weeks. And so uh, I've tried to give you some things that would be helpful to get you caught up. So just keep in mind that as we get toward the end, uh, any questions that you have, I want you to make sure that you uh, you have an opportunity to ask them. Okay. Good morning, Stephen. <clears throat> so with that, let's get started. Um, I have given you all uh, this, this, not that one, this one right here, uh, this website right here where you can go and get all of the assets. Everything that we've done is all in one spot. So that gives you all the worksheets and all the things that you see uh, here. And this is today's right here, your brand guidelines. It will be right here. Uh, these are all the things that we've talked about so far this month. These are the things that we talked about last month. Uh, and this is how we got started, okay? So we're gonna take all of those assets and pull them together today. We're gonna take all of those assets and pull them together today and put them into this worksheet right here called your brand guidelines. And so we'll start with the brand strategy. We're just gonna walk our way through this. Uh, and if you have any questions, let's see, I never did get that. Art, this is twice now when you've posted that before, I've been able to, so thank you. Um, but this is going to give us a, a, an opportunity to have in a single document, in a single spot, in a single place, everything that we have worked on. We're gonna pull all of those pieces together and we're gonna get them in one spot. And I'm gonna show you some tricks to help you to make sure that you have those in a document where uh, you, you can give them to a VA, you can give them to other partners, you can give them to other brand partners and you can make that work, okay? <clears throat> So this is uh, your brand guideline worksheet. Same rule as always before. Uh, copy that. You'll get it. It will be uh, the link that I've given to you here. This link right here. <clears throat> when you open that up, it will be in a um, view only format. And when you do that, all you have to do in the view only format is make a copy of it and you go right here and make a copy and then you change that what i did was i put my my the name of my business there at the beginning okay so that's how you get that uh there's a video this video right here covers that on that rebranding worksheet okay so let's take a look at this document and we'll we'll work our way through this uh, this is mine. This is the image that we did in Uzon. Y'all remember that? How many of you have that one finished? Hello, Larry. How many of you, how many of you have this document completed that was the culmination of everything we did that first month in, during January? Uh, we brought all those pieces together. We put them into a single sheet. This was our, our mission statement. This was the, the brand brief that we were going to print out, leave on our desk, all of that. Y'all remember that? Hopefully you have that completed <clears throat> because, and, and it's going to be hard for you to see here. <clears throat> it may even be hard for your VA or somebody to see just like this. So a good idea is either to make this link clickable I have put those assets in here. I have a place called Visual Assets for Eric Said, and it's on my Google Drive. And I can go to this image right here. And I can actually get a share link from that. And grab a shareable link, copy that, bring it over here, 
right click this and I can apply that link right here so that anyone who is working on with me on my brand or my business can easily uh, click on this and download that and have an easy, easy page for them to read. Does everybody follow what I'm trying to do here? I want to make sure that you get all your assets in one spot and that it's easy for them to be able to get access to them. Boy, try doing a live webinar saying access and assets quickly back to back. That's a little bit scary. So, Leo, what we're going to do is we're going to put everything having to do with your brand. And I know you probably are just joining us uh, midway in the middle of what's going on. Yeah, there's a video on that page, Leo. Um, so if you're joining us in, in the middle, like Leo is, and, and I apologize because this, this has been a, this is actually a three-month course that we're doing here. And the, the um, three-month course is walking you through from beginning to end on how to complete, how to complete your brand strategy, Okay and and actually being able to pull all of the pieces together put all the stuff in one spot and have that uh, available so that you know what fonts you're going to use what colors you're going to use what 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 uh, type face you're going to use for the fonts uh you know uh who, what your who your target market is what language you're going to use to to connect with them all of that kind of stuff so that um, th the link that Art just shared, that's the place where I've been putting all the assets in one spot. It starts out, has a video at the top. This is what it is right here. Uh, starts out, has this video right here at the top that shows you how to take those Google uh, Docs files that are view only and make them a um, um, more than view only, making them uh, available to you so you can so you can work on those. Okay. Yes, and that's 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 what I said earlier. I'm working on getting all of that completed. Um, the, the, right now, we have two places where those assets are at. I load them up to YouTube. Uh, we're really focusing a lot of attention on something else right now. So I load them to YouTube, put them in the group. Uh, I had thought about maybe putting them all in here uh, with the rebranding assets, and I may still do that. Uh, just got a little bit behind. I'm a little bit behind. Uh, Usine is a little behind. We've got uh, some other deadlines going on. Um, uh, Usine is not the only tool on the planet that uses Flash, just so everybody understands that. Um, yeah, the YouTube link, somebody have that, the, the YouTube channel link. If you do, would you please share that? But Flash is not going to affect uh, Usine. It's going to affect everything in, that Chrome's using that that uses Flash, and, um, and and so everybody. There's a whole lot of people that are in kind of a mad scramble to make sure that we get the assets all moved to something that will work um, once Flash goes away. But you have nothing to be concerned about. Flash is not going to. We're going to take care of things. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of, I mean, some, many of your banking assets are, are, are still using Flash. So um, it's, it's, a, it's something that the world is fully aware of. Thank you, Am, for sharing that YouTube channel. I appreciate that. Um, I do. Okay, so we'll go back over here. Uh, now, hopefully we've got everybody caught up. We'll go back over here. The very first thing that you want to have is that brand brief. That was the, everything that we put together at the very beginning of the uh, of, of this course on building your brand. And th that's all in one spot. I've given, in my case, we have two customers, uh, both of them over the age of 55. Uh, that, that was my ideal customer. We had an understanding of what the customer was. We continue to test that. Um, I actually tested it last week, ran some money at it, and uh, tested some ads, and we discovered 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like Y2K all over again. Um, and, 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 and this is still my ideal customer. This is still my ideal client. This still fits my ideal person. The, the customers that I have now all fit in that same category. So we kind of understand that that's, that that's where my focus is supposed to be. So this becomes that brand brief. And this has all of the things in it to rem- keep constantly in front of me what that brand is intended to accomplish. And the brand is for my business called Eric Said. Uh, the tagline is simple, makes awesome, easy. And so right below that in this brand guideline, we're going to put down here all of these things that we've been working on in the past. OK, so first thing that we're going to focus on is our vision. And so this right here, the vision. So I go back over to my brand uh, guidelines over here and I look for my vision. Right. This was the this was the worksheet that we completed. Earlier, it was the brand doc worksheet. And this is the vision right here. This is why the business exists. So come back over here, take that asset and drop it right there. Okay. So now I have my vision in this spot. All right. Everybody watching along what's going on here? The next one is the mission. Come back over here and find the mission. You take that mission and you apply it right here. Now, this is a table. Okay. This is a table. This happens to have five comments in it. And these are the principles or the the things that are the governing principles. The mission's one thing, but then it's kind of uh it, it's it's if I can if I can borrow a phrase from the uh f- from my my mentor Frank Dr. Frank Gaynor from Indianapolis, Indiana. Brilliant individual. He said, you have these fundamental objectives and the fundamental objectives is how do I plan to accomplish this? And so these principles are these fundamental objectives to borrow Dr. Gaynor's language, uh, my mentor when I was a young man. Uh, These are the principles that you're going to use. So this is in a table. Can you see this table here? Um, These are in a table. So. If you have five of these, which is is what we have here, what you're doing is you're dropping those cells into a table. So you go back over here and you take a look at these principles. Okay. These are principles. And I'm just going to copy a couple of these so that you get the idea of what we're doing here. I'll paste that in there. Simplicity. My case, simplicity is a governing principle. Um, and, and so I'm going to copy that. Stewardship is a governing principle. I'm going to copy stewardship in here. And um, community is a governing principle. So we copy that here. Are y'all with me? Let me know if you're following along. Now, this is going to be really important. I uh, I was working with somebody one time and they were going to help me and and uh, they they kept they kept doing the same thing over and over again. They would suggest that we use a tool that we didn't have. Okay, and I would say no, we're going to use what we've got because you're just asking for something. You know, like like we were using Google Docs and she wanted to use Trello. It's like, I, I get it, but we're not going to do that. 
because that didn't fit this principle right here, stewardship. I wanted to make sure that we used to the maximum the assets that we had. I mean, I'm going to try to read your comments as we go so we don't lose anybody's comments here because I think Mark's making an important point here. I can see why the customer hero worksheet is important to create for yourself besides the client. As I had a web developer contact me and I'm trying to describe what my site is, I had a complete hero sheet would have been great to forward to them. See, that's the reason why we do this because eventually you're going to outgrow your ability to be able to do it all. And the other thing is that you do the flip side of that. And what that's what I'm describing right now. This person who kept wanting to add on additional things and other stuff that violated this principle of stewardship. And then also violated this principle of simplicity. And I wasn't going to let that happen because those are the governing principles of the business. So it helped me to to, uh, to to do one of my favorite phrases as a business coach, kiss them or kill them. You, you, either, you either kiss that person for their ideas or you um, terminate the relationship. So it really becomes a fantastic governing principle. It guides you to what you're going to do, okay? Absolutely. Steven says we have an annual local election coming up and a brand doc also seems like a good fit for launching campaigns, especially candidate websites. Absolutely. You can see how important this becomes for lots of things. Um, I was, and I've told this story a couple of times. I was hired by one of the uh, larger insurance companies in the country to be their brand ambassador at one time. And, um, and so this was great when they were going to relaunch their their products into the community and they needed to have some governing principles on how to do that what i've done in this in this course is i've taken the stuff that i learned from that both good and bad because there were some things that they did wrong in the process of doing that that um were created problems for them and so in the in the um uh, in, in the debrief that we had uh, following how that launch went, we discussed and discovered what things that we would never do again, okay? Yeah, and the reason why we took my business here to start out here with my, Michael was so that we would all get a chance to see this uh, live and for real, okay? The next thing is the logos. And remember, I told you you needed to have a couple of different kinds of logos. You needed to have your logo that had the colors. You needed to have just a black version of the logo. You needed to have a white version of the logo. And then I like this because it adds a little pizzazz to the white only logo on a black background. Okay. And so having all of those assets in one spot. Now, <clears throat> again, this is one of those things. I want to make this linkable over here. So we're done with that. We'll go back over here. This is in Google Drive. And I did this so that we could get this from Google Drive and you'd see what we're doing. And this is that this is my logo. This is a tiny logo I needed for something else. Um, but this is the this is the regular logo. And again, we talked about this when we when we uh, worked on the logos a couple of weeks ago, and that was make sure that you make your logo big. Um, I put a very, very faint black outline around the outside of this that you only see when it's blown up like this. Um, but what I want to do here is I want to grab the share link again, and I'm going to apply this share link so that this person can download this large logo image and my thing moved over too far they can download this large logo image and back over here and i right click on this and i'm going to apply a link and that link goes right here 
So when I send this document to my VA and she said, Eric, where do I get that logo at? Well, all she has to do is click on this. I could also take this main logo right here and I could make that a link. But the fact is that you need to have the assets accessible so that they're easy to get a hold of. Now, Michelle, that's a good question. This one here, um, I, let's see, I have it right here, is that one is 2440 by 750. 2140 by 750. And obviously, if I, if I try to make this 2140 by 2140, which is a square size, then I'm going to end up with a giant amount of, of, of uh, background up here at the top. And there's going to be some places where I'm not going to be able to use that because I can't stack things on top of each other. Understand? If you're using a block builder, you'll bump into the edges of this. So you want to crop this pretty tight. But this is the white version of that. But I also, one other thing that you want to make sure that you do is I've saved this as a vector image so that I can I can um, I can mess with it as a vector image, right? So I have a I have the colored version, I have a black version. I have a white version of the logo, and then I have a, I, I call it the pizzazz version of the logo. Oh, that's a good question. I, I said that without thinking, um, I'm sorry. This, the the letters themselves, okay, the the um, the font itself inside of design, or inside of logo, uh, Uzine is a, a vector image, okay? And as as are both of these, so both of these are actually vector images. When I clump them together, save them as a group, and you saw what I did. Did y'all see what I did? I I selected this. It's really hard to see that with with the uh, color. So let me put the let me throw some color back inside of this so it's easy to see. All right. So I'm gonna save this this first line. And then, so I've selected it, and I don't know if you can see the faint outline right here. Can you see the outline of the uh, of the letters? And then I'm going to come down, hold down the shift key, come to the next one, and then it groups it right here like this. And I save that group. Well, by saving that group, what I've done is I've saved that as a vector image, okay? And that allows me to be able to increase, decrease sizes without any distortion or loss of, or degrade, degradation. But this is my original logo right here. And so I always have it. Saved it as a group. When you click on this right here, I've also saved, I have to undo this. I've also saved in this folder right here, my brand colors, here, 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 so on. Understand? We'll talk about those brand colors in just a second. So it kind of bounce back and forth between what, what we're working on as a project and also what we're, what we're doing as an understanding about how Uzine works, okay? But that allows me to give have nice, crisp looking images here and so on. One of the things I will tell you that I do, and the reason for that was when you see this right here, and I make that white, and I make this background right here white for um, for this asset right here, when I have it over here. And I haven't uploaded the white one yet. So we're going to upload it. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. And why. Did I save the all white version of that? I know I did. That's it right there. They're a little hard to find. 
do you see why I put a little, uh, why I put a very, very thin black outline border on the outside of that? See why I did that? It's easy for me to find. Sometimes you just make life easy for a guy who's losing his eyesight. But putting a very, very light, and I think that's a two-point border. But it makes all the difference in the world in being able to find it. And then when you go back over here and look at this, see, it disappears. It just disappears. When you use it on the black background, that, that very thin uh, outline, um, border outline, disappears when I put it on a, on a black background. But it makes it a lot easier for me to see it and find it. Okay. But you understand why you want to have these? You want to link to them. And you link to them in your Google Drive over here so that you have, by, by just simply selecting this, and you take the share link, and you copy that shareable link. You come back over to this asset and you link to it. Yes, exactly, Stephen. Oh no, I'll do the outline by hand. Here, watch, I'm sorry. See, this is, this is my asset right here. And when you click on this little magic tool right here, this is your special effects. And watch that outline. See it go away? That's the border. It's a two pixel border. A two pixel border on a 2140 size image is going to make that pretty much disappear. And yes, I'll do the shareable link one more time. But yeah, that's just that little, this, this, uh, this little tool right here. And you just do that. Okay. Now that, how do you get the shareable asset link again? Select this little stack menu right here. Grab the shareable link. It says, get a shareable link. I click, get a shareable link, copy that link. And then close that, go back over here. And then I just open this up, right click here. And then it says, create a link. And I put, I put that link right there. All right, everybody watch, follow that. We can't produce a vector logo. All we can do is produce a ping file. So I save the, I save the groups so that they're still vector and then then I can play with them but we can't save as a vector image we can only save a ping file with a with a transparent background again that's the reason why I make them really really large that way I have at, uh, the ability to be able to pull them into something else and and modify them okay so that's the logo section so you take the logo section and you make the logo section really easy now the next thing that we do, and we could put all the, we we could put a link to all of the, to that logo file if we wanted to that I have in in uh, Google Drive. <clears throat> now we go to the colors, and this this color worksheet right here um, is actually taking each of the colors, each of the brand colors, and applying them in different formatting. Okay, those are different things that have been done with that, and you'll see we worked on this together. A while back when we did this so i'll go back to the dashboard and you'll be able to see this and it was right here remember when we we created this this box area right here and we began to play with it to see how those colors were going to look and I can, I was starting to fill out these boxes right here with the colors taken from right here. Everybody remember that? 
That's what you have right here. And if I'm going to give instruction to a VA on how do I want certain calls to action boxes to look or certain banners to look or certain titles to look or certain things like that, then I'm going to create, I'm going to do exactly what we did right here. And that is I'm going to create, let me get rid of that. I'm going to create a box and I'm going to show how that's going to look. And I want to take that box and I want to put it in here. Okay. Everybody follow that. Now, the next thing is this little chart right here, which we created before. And that was, and, and, and some of the assets that I've given to you before, like, like colors.co, those kinds of things become extremely helpful. Um, I can actually open up this little file right here. And this is my Eric said brand colors right here. So I click on that. Now I have my palette available to me. And if I want to know what color to make this right here, I click on this. I copy that. Y'all, I'm trying to do this off of a Candyland box top. So um, sometimes my mouse isn't going where I want it to go. One of the things I like when I call it, when I copy this from this right here, and we, I showed y'all how to use this a while back. One of the things I think is kind of cool when I copy from this is it's actually going to take the what I copy and outline it with the color. You don't see it there, but you'll see it here. Oh, my Candyland box lid isn't always working like I want it to. There we go. Now I can change the color of this by going down here and click on table properties. And that background color right there, I click that background color and I click on custom and I drop that same color right there that I just copied. Y'all follow that. Hit OK. Hit OK. And that's supposed to change that color. What did I do wrong? Make that custom. Am I missing a number? I think I am. I think I missed a number. It's picking up the wrong color. Forgive me while I fumble around here for just a second. Let's make this really dark so we can tell the difference. There we go. There. See what we did? Does that make sense to everybody? That's not my call to action color, by the way. This is my call to action color over here. I show them how to do exactly the same thing that I'm that that I did, and that's just make a copy of it, or I send them, or I send them this one. My VA has access to my my Google Docs account, so that makes it work really slick. But I also did this. We're going to insert an image here. We'll upload this image from my computer because I found this a little bit easier to do. Why 
I'm finding everything easy to do except for what I'm doing. Insert image from the computer. That's it right there. There. And I have I have them listed like this. The dominant color, the shade color, the tint color, the accent color, and the base color. Okay. Does that make sense? It's called the action color. That's a great question, M, and I'm going to answer that because I'm really kind of proud of my VA, okay? And uh, I, I have courses on how to do that, but, but my VA is a girl that I taught when I taught high school. She has a disability. She's limited on what she can do now. Today, she got sick when she had her second child, and, um, and so she uh, is my VA and uh, is a wonderful gal. She's known me since, since I was 30 years old. And, um, and, and so she understands my voice. She understands my, my language. She understands that I'm going to say things a little bit differently than other people do. She understands the whole simplicity thing because she had that drilled into her head when she was in, in middle school and high school. Uh, just, I, I have a huge advantage with that. Um, it's one of those things that you just wouldn't get anywhere else. It's a pretty amazing opportunity. All right, the next thing that we come to is the typefaces. And so we're gonna go back to that typeface sheet that we had. Do I have my typeface sheet? This was the dominant color right here. Um, but we have the typeface sheet. Right here, the typeface worksheet. And you should have a copy of this, okay? And it will have your website font pair, the headline and the paragraph. In my case, the headline, is this the paragraph font is this they look very very well together and so um my 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 h1 tag will be this bold 40 in this font okay so what i did was this i actually took this whole section right here and i changed it from whatever font that was to the font that I wanted it to be. Okay. And, and under that particular font, we can go to bold, make it just like that. So now my VA carry knows exactly what the headlines are supposed to look like. Now, most of the stuff that we do, we've got that built into the platform, our websites and our, our, uh, um, our sales page uh, uh, builders, we have that built into the program so that that's the way they work. Yeah, that's kind of what I said earlier, Stephen. Stephen says giving a, the VA uh, the rebrand document to see what they can do with it seems like a perfect trial assignment to find a keeper. I, I think so exactly, uh, but because particularly like the case I was talking about before, the person that I looked at before, uh, Carrie, was somebody who wanted to make things more complicated, and they were missing the point. The point was that it has to be simple, and so they were missing the point. That didn't that that that, that didn't go well. So. You're right. It's a great way to find out if we have a, a, a keeper or not. So, and I'm going to show you an example of, of, of what Carrie did with this in just a minute, okay? Uh, the paragraph font. Now, again, my audience, my, I, I make my fonts are 20-point fonts. I don't like bold, but 20-point uh, font. Um, and in this particular case, we actually copied this bold part right here. Because you'll see when you go to Open Sans, I have it on normal. So that's Open Sans normal. So that should say normal. All right. And then the banner fonts will be Roboto 40 point bold. And I changed this so it's a reflection of Roboto bold everybody with us on this this whole the whole purpose of the of this right here all 
So I give this, as Stephen had said, I give this to Carrie. Carrie, this is this is our brand sheet. This is what we're going to do. Uh, this is how I want things to be going forward. So I come back over here, and this is what I've got. She made this the dominant color, right? She made this header background a dom the dominant color. She applied the the uh, um, the logo. She selected the correct logo to use. Right. This is that top headline. Right. It's the right font. This is the right font for the paragraphs. This is that sec. This is the H2 tag. This is the call to action button. And this also tracks where you're at in the process. Okay. So do you see how she took, do you see how she took the brand colors and the brand objective and made it work? Now, let me tell you a, a, a really quick story. I was working for a magazine one time, and and um, one of the sales reps for the magazine had sold a, a – um, I was trying to find the problem with the magazines, what I was doing. The, pro the magazine was having issues, and I, I couldn't figure out what the issues were. So I was hired to come in and figure out what was going on with the with the magazine. And I came in, and we the sales rep came in with, with the, the, the ad sales, and I noticed that one of the – Add mockups when it went to proof for print, it looked different than where it had come from. And I went back to the graphics artist that had done the mockup and I said, What happened to the logo for this business? And I mentioned the name of the business. And she said, oh, it just didn't pop. So I had to give it some pop. What's wrong with that statement? You don't have the right to change somebody else's brand. She took somebody else's brand and modified it because she didn't think it accomplished her purpose. You don't mess with somebody else's brand. And I remember having the conversation with the owner of the magazine. It is time that you kissed her or killed her. And she said, do what? I said, you can't let that kill your business. That's the reason why this becomes so important. I'm going to have down here. I don't care if some hotshot graphics artist doesn't like think that Open Sans is a sexy enough font. It was the decision that was made, and there was a reason why it was made, and we're going to stick with it. Right? Now, there's one more piece to this puzzle that I don't have done. So my assignment isn't completed either. And one of the reasons is because my daughter is a photographer that, that I'm here with, and I want to consult her on finding the correct images for my hero images. But this is where you put that imagery uh, for both the, 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 um, the, 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 Customer hero images, and that's what this is. This is the customer hero images. Now, I'm going to park right here for just a second. Does anybody see the same thing that I see on this image?
Yes, this is the hardest thing to do is to find exactly the right exactly the right images for for this. Yes, yeah, somebody photoshopped this visual story brain in, in in here. The color doesn't work. This was one of those cases where you probably use a different a different font uh, or a different uh, logo would have been the all black logo in this case. And the other thing is it doesn't line up with the top. I don't care about the hair taking off. That's pretty normal. When you live in Huntsville, Alabama, you get tired of looking at rockets. I can tell you that I will. That That is kind of important, but, but just looking at, just giving this a quick look at it, it's like, Oh, I would have to modify that image just a little bit and make it work. But that's not why it's here. It's not here for us to, to dissect. But I wanted to work with my daughter to get this right here. Yeah, that's that's the first thing that caught my attention. As I was scrolling, I saw that and I was you're exactly right. These are the images right here that I wanted to help my get my daughter's act, uh, help with to <clears throat> help me get unique images because I don't want to use stock images for this. This is too important. Um, and I have some really good ideas for how to make this work. So. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to consult with her to do that. So that's part of my part of this trip is the objective for this trip. But then you figure out where they're going to go, that kind of thing. And you can see how this gets blended into the other stuff that you have. Right. I mean, the next goal that Carrie's going to have is to be able to, is, is to do this. See, she took this and created this so that this fits the overall plan, right? All right, any questions? We're gonna take the remainder of the time and answer any questions to help people get caught up here. But this is that brand guideline. This is gonna become an extremely important document to you as you move forward. We'll have a whole new set of assignments for you next week. But I thought we'd take the last few minutes and just answer any questions that people might have. The assignment simply to get caught up now and make sure that you got uh, get this brand guideline document done so that you have it and you can share it. You know, and that's a that's a really important thing. There's a couple of things to remember about that, though. You can overthink things to the point where you run into trouble. All right. Um, but it's always a good idea to give it a day. Just give it a day. Figure out. I mean, what really looked cool? Maybe that lobster font just looked really cool for headlines until the next day. And you went, really? That's a bad idea. But if you find yourself doing that continuously, then you're stuck in that perfection cycle. And perfectionism isn't a good place to be. All right. Do you all see the value? <laughs> it does look pretty great when you're sleep deprived. Um, one of the reasons why you'll see me use it occasionally like this. But if you'll go, and if you'll go back to that color worksheet that we did and figure out what it is that you're trying to accomplish, what what emotion do you want to evoke? Because colors evoke emotion, okay? And then it's not, I was talking with a business owner on um, Thursday a week ago, and she said, my favorite color is, and I said, I don't care. And I took her through that color worksheet, and she went, oh. 
this is very different than what I would have done if I had just stuck, stayed with what I thought was going to work. Always have to see it from the customer's perspective, always. And a little feedback, as Bev is saying, is a, is a really good idea. Because when I when I threw out what my objective was for, for my brand, it was interesting because three of you had picked the color before I showed you what color I had picked. Well, that was great confirmation for me. All right. Anything else? No, I totally agree, Sheila. That's the reason why I said the hair didn't bother me in the least. You, you just, you, you, you know, unless, of course, she had a hair going up her nose or something, then we might want to Photoshop that. But um, no, I didn't take it that way at all, Sheila. Thank you for the feedback, though. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to do a better job of getting the replays done. It's just when that was blocking out four hours of my time, I, I didn't have four hours to give. We have actually done that, Stephen. That's that's really a good, uh, that's a good comment. Stephen says it helps if you look at some top rated sites and see what people are doing. Yeah, the four hours was excessive, and, and, and it was just, it was unbelievable. Um, and I've used every compression trick in the book, so. Because there are trending colors and there are trending fonts. Yeah, Larry, one of the reasons why I put everything in one spot is so that you wouldn't have to be fishing around for it. And that rebranding link, that ericsaid.com rebranding is the place to go to look for that. All right, cool. Anything else? Anything that anybody, any other question anybody might have or any comment as we get ready to sign off? Yeah, that's, this is that lobster font or something similar to that. That's what I was talking about earlier about the lobster font. Yeah, Steven said, don't try to reinvent the wheel. That's that's really important advice. All you're doing is improving. You're bringing you to that that look, that layout, that that overall thing. All right, I'm going to sign off, folks, um, and get my get ready to go get my my sidekick here uh, in a little bit. And uh, you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I will try to get this replay done as quickly as I can. Okay, so thank you all for joining me on this Friday. I know you got things you can do, but I'm glad that you spend your Friday morning with me. So you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we'll talk next Friday, same time. For me, a different place, but you know, you know the routine. Okay. Have a great weekend.